my friends, my name is Scott Gentry. I'm the senior pastor here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to this evening's Monday Thursday service. This is a very special service for uh, for Christians, uh, and we're celebrating it in obviously some very uh, unique uh, circumstances now where we're not able to gather together. But we're going to walk ourselves through some of the scriptural accounts of what took place that night when Jesus gathered with his disciples. Uh, celebrate the, the supper right where you are in your home with whatever elements you have handy. And then be able to, with a grateful heart, say, Jesus, we thank you for what you have done for us. And we remember your death on the cross. Monday Thursday itself is an interesting uh, name. Uh, it comes from a Latin word that means mandate. And that was because Jesus said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. So this, the meal that he celebrated with his disciples was something that, which has happened, that they have shared all time with all uh, followers of Jesus. And every time we come to that table, we remember uh, Jesus' death on the cross. We remember his, his acts of service and humility uh, in this meal. And by taking uh, bread or juice, and tonight it might be water and crackers, whatever you have on hand, we, we remember those very sp uh, specific items uh, with his body and blood uh, being broken and shed for us for our forgiveness. So I hope that you will enjoy the service. More than that, I hope it will be very meaningful for you as you look deep into your heart about what Christ has done for you, your own personal gratitude, uh, your own desire to, uh, to be uh, intimate in your relationship with him. And I pray that tonight will be a real blessing for you. Let's begin uh, this time with a word of prayer together, shall we? Let's pray. Jesus, as we uh, begin this celebration of this meal, under such different circumstances for all of us, we know that you're present with us right where we are, right right in our living rooms. Uh, even if we are there by ourselves, you are present. And we know that as we celebrate with whatever items we'll use tonight, we will be remembering your death on the cross for us. So Lord, my prayer is that you would bless and encourage each person here who is a follower of yours. And I pray if there are those that are watching that have not yet made that decision to trust you, that tonight they would place their trust in you as they remember again your death on the cross for them, for their forgiveness, for their life and hope. So Jesus, thank you for this time. Bless us now as we do this, remembering you and honoring you. It's in your name we pray.
records for us in chapter 22 what transpired when they were gathered there around the table. He says, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. The scriptures tell us in Matthew 26 these words. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. And Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it has been written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. You see, it was just a little bit earlier in that same chapter in Matthew 26 that we read this account about Judas. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? And so they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. And from then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. It's so hard for us to comprehend Judas. I mean, he was one of the disciples Jesus had called him. He, like the other disciples, had left everything to follow Jesus. He had preached, he'd seen miracles. He actually was doing service and ministry just like all the others. So what happened? Well, the Bible tells us that, that Satan had entered Judas. Now, here's what we need to understand. Anyone who's walking with Christ, walking sincerely in faith, that could never happen. Somewhere along the way, Judas began to compromise in his faith. He made some openings, some gaps in his life. The Bible tells us that as the keeper of the treasury, he began to take some money for himself. Probably started off in a small way, but it grew deeper. And as Satan continued to work in Judas' heart, he began to have a different view of Jesus. He no longer viewed him as his savior. He viewed him as someone that he wanted to control. He had an agenda for Jesus to fulfill. And when he saw that Jesus wasn't fulfilling that agenda, then all of Judas's thoughts and priorities overtook everything. It's worth considering as we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper to look at our life, to say, Lord, am I walking sincerely with you? Is there evidence in my life of a sincere faith? And what would that look like? Well, it may be watching services online like we're doing now. It may be reading our Bibles regularly and praying regularly. I think those are all elements of that. It certainly is going to be a person who on a daily basis would say, God, examine my life. If there's anything that's not pleasing to you, reveal it to me quick to confess our sins, quick to turn away from those things that we know that do not honor God. So in the moments before we receive the Lord's Supper, let's take a moment ourselves just to say, God, search my heart. Is there anything tonight I need to confess to you? Anything that is not right with you? Any way where I have begun to compromise in my walk? After you've had a time just to pray and confess, our sins will continue on. So as the music plays, just take an opportunity to let the Lord search your heart and make your heart right with Him.
It's John the Apostle who records for us one of the most tender moments of this meal with his disciples, but one of the greatest examples that Jesus left for them and for all of us. We find it in John chapter 13. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And so he got up from the meal and he took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. The practice of foot washing was something that was very common in Jesus' day. In his day, people walked on dusty roads, often for miles and miles, in their sandals, sometimes in their bare feet, and so their feet would become dirty, dusty, and it was the common practice, especially for persons who had a little wealth, to have a servant in their home. That when a guest would enter their home, the servant would pick up a towel, would go get a a bowl of water, and would begin to wash away the dirt and the grime from their feet. Now that's a practice we just don't do, certainly not on a regular basis. But here's something that we can take away and incorporate in our own uh, Monday Thursday service this evening. You can look around in your home, and if you're a person that is single by yourself, you can still think about this with other people in your life, and think, what act of service can I do that would be a blessing to someone? What act of service can I do that nobody wants to do? That you yourself would say, I'm going to humble myself and and do that, to make a difference, to show that I'm really going to be modeling my life after Jesus humbling myself in humility to serve the people in my life. Now, I know we have a lot of restrictions right now with the coronavirus. We can't actively go out and easily do things for neighbors, but we can stop and think very clearly tonight, Lord, speak to my heart. Is there something that I can do for the people that are in my life or something I can do in some way for the people who are around me, even in this time, to serve them? It's worth taking a moment to stop and pause and and pray and say, God, how can I humble myself like you did? How can I serve others like you did? Give me an opportunity right now to do that. As you listen to the music, just pause for a few moments and think, is there some way that I could serve the people in my life? And so now we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you had this meal with your disciples. We thank you that you gave them symbols that would help them to understand what you were about to do on their behalf. And you gave them bread and juice to remember your body and your blood. But Lord, it wasn't just a gift for those that were gathered there that evening. It was a gift for all believers for all time. And so we come to this table tonight, Lord, remembering your sacrifice for us. We come to this table remembering that you did die on the cross for our sins. We come to this table remembering that you give us forgiveness and new life. We come to this table remembering that as we take these elements into our body, your very spirit lives in us and empowers us to live a victorious life. Lord, we come to this table with gratitude and thanksgiving, remembering all of your goodness and kindness for us. Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness to go to the cross. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being present with us now as we celebrate this special meal. We ask for your blessings.
name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. And so you have your elements with you, whatever they may be. The scriptures tell us that Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, on the night he was there with his disciples, that he, he took bread and he broke it. He did that so he could distribute to all of them. But he also did that symbolically to say, my body will be broken on the cross. And as he took that bread and distributed it to them, he said, I want you to take this and I want you to eat this. And I want you to remember that this is my body given for you. And so now take whatever element you have and eat that and remember with a thankful heart, Jesus' death on the cross for you. The scriptures tell us that Jesus took a cup of wine, juice, it could be water, it could be whatever liquid you have tonight. And he gave this as a special symbol to his disciples and to us. And he said, this represents my blood that's been poured out for you on the cross to forgive your sins. And he had each one of them drink that. And he says, and as you drink this, remember that this is my blood spilled for you. Drink this and be thankful. And so now with whatever liquid that you have there, drink it now, remembering Jesus' blood shed for you on the cross and be grateful. Let's pray again. Jesus, we've celebrated this supper and for some of us it may be in a very unique way. But you are honored in our taking. You are honored in us remembering. You, you are honored, Lord, when we come to you to say, Jesus, thank you and fill me with your spirit so that I can live for you. You tell us that when we celebrate this supper, it is a proclamation of what you've done and also a proclamation of the promise of your return. So Jesus, we do await your coming. And in that time, while we live with uncertainty in these days, you live with certainty about our future. You know the day and the hour when you'll return. You know everything about our life, and so we put our full confidence in you this evening. We thank you, Jesus, that we've been able to take time to remember what you celebrated and gave your church as a gift. We thank you that we've been able to remember your death on the cross for us. I pray you would bless each person and each home through this season. We pray that we would remember your death tomorrow as we come to Good Friday. We pray that we would remember your resurrection as we celebrate on Easter Sunday. So Jesus, with a grateful heart, we return thanks to you for all that you have done and the promises that will still be fulfilled. It is in your name we pray, amen. Well, I wanna thank you for sharing this Monday, Thursday service, pretty unique, uh, but God is honored that we've taken time to remember and to celebrate. I hope that you can join us tomorrow at noon for our Good Friday celebration, remembrance, and then on Easter Sunday at 11 a.m. for our Easter resurrection uh, service. Uh, a whole service that is built on the theme of Jesus is our hope. So God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, I look forward to being with you again very soon.